All right, welcome back to Off the Bench, presented by United Dairy Farmers. A real pleasure to be joined uh, by Grant Napier, who joins us from uh, – I, I think, Grant, you're still down there in uh, – a uh, guy like you looking like you're all tanned up down there in South Beach <laughs> or Miami and hanging out. How are you? I'm good, Tom. It's great to be on your show. How are you, buddy? I'm doing all right. You know, uh, Grant, you and I share uh, similar stories. And yep. um, you were a guy that was broadcasting. I was on your show many times when you were in Sacramento um, yep. talking about the NFL or Major League Baseball. But you were also the play-by-play -play voice of the Sacramento Kings. And mm -hmm. you made the comment, please share it with our viewers, because I know there are a lot of people that when I brought up your name and told them you were going to come on today, they're like, oh, my gosh, what's he doing now? How's he doing now? What's life been like yeah. you for you ever since you you said don't all I don't want to speak for you but you basically said sure. uh, all lives matter. Yeah, I said six words on social media in response to a tweet by Demarcus Cousins, who I had some run-ins in with my talk show and as the 32-year TV announcer for the Sacramento Kings, Demarcus was uh, suspended a lot. He would get into it with the coaches. He would curse out fans and. Tom, you know, in this business, uh, you know, sometimes you have to say things that, you know, people are not going to take too kind of. And that was uh, my job in Sacramento as not only the TV voice, but a talk show host for 26 years. And he reached out to me on social media and asked me what I thought of BLM. And I said, hey, uh, how you doing? I thought you forgot about me. Haven't heard from you in years. And then I put in capital letters, all lives matter. And then I put every single one with three exclamation points. So six words, all lives matter. Every single one with three exclamation points. And within 48 hours, uh, I had lost both my jobs of the uh, you know, my talk show host for the same station in Sacramento for 26 years and the TV voice of the Sacramento Kings for 32 years. I made the tweet on a Sunday night, May 31st, 2020. And on June 2nd, uh, I was like, wow, what happened to my world? It was turned upside down. Uh, you know, for, for both of us in 2020, that was a year in the United States of America where there were a lot of things going on uh, in, in that summer. Yeah. The George Floyd uh, murder there in uh, Minneapolis, um, yeah. you know, riots from coast to coast, especially where you were. It, it seemed like there were far yeah. more out west than there were anywhere else. Um, wh what, what has life, Grant, been like for you ever since then? Well, I think you could probably speak for me on this. Uh, my life was turned completely upside down. Uh, I lived in Sacramento since 87. Uh, I had become a fixture in the community. I had a foundation, uh, which has turned out, Tom, you know, nobody wants to spend five minutes when it comes to cancel culture. They just want to cancel you and move on. You know, I started a foundation in the early 2000s called the Future Foundation of Sacramento. And we sent at the underprivileged students to college. I had a a charity golf tournament every year that we raised the funds. And I sent 104 students to college, many of whom were minorities, but it just doesn't seem like that's important anymore when you want to be canceled. What's my life been like? Uh, you know, we picked up, uh, we left Sacramento, Tom, because Sacramento is kind of a small community and I'm a big fish in a small pond there. And people were so nice. They were so compassionate. But whether I was out for a walk, whether I went to the store, whether I went to the gym, uh, it was a daily reminder of what happened to me, and it was too difficult. And Tom, I just wanted to go to an area that number one, I really liked, and number two, where nobody knew me. And so we picked, packed up and we moved to South Florida. And Tom, you said something on my podcast when I had you on a couple of months ago that really resonated with me. When you get canceled in this country, it's not just you. It's your wife, it's your kids, it's your close friends. It's your entire family. And a lot of people don't quite understand that. So as hard as it is for me, it's much more difficult for your loved ones going through this because they have no control over the situation. Their lives are completely uprooted and you move on. And no one ever wants to talk about that. And I'm glad that you brought that up on my podcast because it's not just about you. It's not just about me. It's about how it affects our entire family and the domino effect. So what's it been like? Um, you know, it, it's been quite a learning experience. I don't have any problem putting my head on the pillow at night. I know what I stand for. I know how I was raised. I know what I believe in. I know about my ethics and my morals. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. I've never met a perfect person except for those that are on social media that appear to be perfect with all of their tweets and everything. But I've made mistakes in my life. I think in retrospect, you know, my mistake was the timing of my tweet. 
I don't think there's anything wrong with what I said. I'm never going to apologize, Tom, for saying all lives matter, every single one. I mean, who the hell doesn't believe that? I think that in retrospect, my timing, one week after the uh, murder of George Floyd, uh, the timing was not good. But here's something else. You know, leading up to my tweet on May 31st, if you go back and look at my timeline for the previous week, I was extremely supportive in putting out tweets and retweeting in support of what happened to George Floyd in Minneapolis and, you know, all of the issues going on with Black Lives Matter. I was actually supporting and putting out things on social media. So again, that was completely ignored in my case when I got canceled. Now you're doing a show what? A daily show, weekly show? What are you doing down yep. there in South Florida with your time? You know, I'm doing a couple of different things. You know, I have a daily show on a new app called Listen App. And Tom, I love it because it's basically like a radio show on the, on the internet. And it's an interactive show. I have a lot of people that are calling up. It's basically a talk show on the internet. I, I do a show twice week, weekly with Sean Salisbury talking about the NFL and college football on the internet. Uh, I have a podcast that I put out twice weekly where I have a lot of guests. So I'm staying busy, Tom. I mean, is it what I want to do? No, it's not what I want to do. Uh, have I enjoyed doing it? Yes, I've enjoyed doing it. But I think like yourself, you know, our first love is play by play. And you being, you know, a, a longtime announcer with the Reds and with the NFL, I think I speak for you when I speak for me when I say this. That's my passion. That's what I love. I love doing live events. You can't really substitute the uh, spontaneity, the joy, the excitement of doing a live event. So I do miss that. I miss that a lot. But for the time being, I'm happy. I've had a lot of phenomenal, phenomenal interviews. I was so grateful. Charles Barkley was my first guest on my podcast, and he was great, very supportive. He was one of the first people that called me, Tom, when I lost my jobs, and he didn't even have my number. He found out my number. He called me, and we had a great conversation. So, uh, you know, Dusty Baker, I, maybe my favorite podcast when I had Dusty on. So I've had a lot of great guests. We've gotten into a lot of, you know, important issues instead of just the X's and O's. Sure. So that part of my life has been very rewarding. One of the uh, the big story, the biggest story right now in South Florida is the start of the Miami Dolphins. They're three and yeah. They're coming here to play the Bengals on um, Thursday night. Uh, this might be a stupid question when you start three and oh but Miami's yeah. always been when they have good teams that's a great football town uh, I had really close friends yeah. that grew up down there whose families had season tickets and so forth um, it's got to be off the charts the vibe down there right now with the Dolphins right Grant it's unbelievable and like yourself who was a frequent visitor to Miami you know doing a variety of sports whether it was baseball or football you know I've been coming to Miami for a long time covering the, the Miami Heat, you know, annually. Uh, and we've always seen that there are a lot of empty seats when the teams are not going well, but this really is a passionate football market. And you're right, the, the city is off the hook right now. I mean, the question mark coming in was two are gonna be able to deliver this year. They went out, obviously got Tyreek Hill, you got Jalen Waddell. They have an explosive offense and Tua has been brilliant through three weeks. I mean, the guy has been absolutely outstanding, but you're right, Tom. Uh, the excitement down here in South Florida for the Dolphins is incredible right now. I mean, it is Dolphin fever, no doubt about it. Look, when the season starts, and it's always funny, we were talking about this with Brian Billick last week. You know, when the NFL season uh -huh. uh, schedule comes out and everybody looks at it and you're trying to figure out your team, okay, can we win that game? Are we going to lose that game? You know, right on down the road. I think a lot of people around here, uh, the Bengals are coming off a trip to the Super Bowl. They've got all these guys coming back. They revamped their offensive line. Yeah. Lord knows that means you're automatically going to be better. We know it doesn't always work out that way. And you were looking at a Thursday night against Miami, and you're thinking, oh, okay, that's a win. Uh, now, now all of a sudden, uh, I'm not so sure of that, nor are many around here. What's the, the early feeling like with the Dolphins coming here to Cincinnati yeah. this Thursday? I don't think the Bengals could have a better situation than they have Thursday night. The game that the Dolphins just played two days ago was unbelievably hot, okay? The heat index was near 99 degrees, near 100, actually. It was 99. The Dolphins were really outplayed in that game. If you look at the stats, the Bills had the ball for 40 minutes of that game time, okay? And, all right, and they outgained – the Miami Dolphins in total yards by a wide, wide margin. A short week for the Dolphins. The Dolphins aren't going 17-0. and 0. 
You could not ask for a better situation if you're the Cincinnati Bengals. I have great questions about which Dolphins team is going to be able to line up on the field coming up on Thursday. They've got to be exhausted. They got to be. I, mean, I think it's going to take two days just to you know hydrate yourself. The conditions of that game were absolutely brutal. It was a game of attrition. You could see it on both sidelines, but the Bills particularly because their bench was in the sun all day. I have real questions on whether the Dolphins are going to be able to line up and bring an A game on Thursday. Tom, as you well know, being a road team on a Thursday night is difficult as it is. But when you look back at the game the Dolphins just played, I don't think the Bengals could ask for a better situation than they have coming up. I'd be very surprised if the Bengals do not win this game on Thursday. I'd be very surprised. Not shocked. I'd be very surprised. I don't think you're going to get the best version of the Dolphins on Thursday. I really don't. Um, Looking at at the Dolphins uh, team this year, you mentioned Tua, and everybody knows what he did in the Baltimore game, throws the six touchdowns, they rally late. Everybody knows about Hill and and the whole night and and Waddle and and those guys. But, you know, outside of the Baltimore game, and look, there are a lot of teams that are going to struggle against Baltimore on defense. But, but, But defense appears to be a strength for this Dolphins team that gets overshadowed by what yep. the offense is doing. Is that fair to say? Oh, it's big time fair to say. I thought the defensive game plan by the coordinator, Boyer, was phenomenal against the Bills. And they come at you. And we all know what the Bengals' problem is, is protecting Burrow and their offensive line. That's the one aspect of this game that would concern me if I'm looking at it from Cincinnati's perspective. The Dolphins are going to line up seven and eight in the box and they're going to come at you from all types of different angles. This is an aggressive blitzing defense. And if the Bengals do not do a better job of protecting their quarterback, then maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the Dolphins will walk in there and steal that game. And I'm going to use the term steal because I think if the Dolphins are able on a short week with what they just experienced Sunday against the Bills, if they're able to go on the road and beat the Bengals to me, that will be stealing the game. That to me is the number one key with the Dolphins because they are going to bring pressure and they're going to show pressure. They don't hide it. They line seven and eight up in the box and they're coming at you and you better be ready to block them. Um, Before I let you go, Grant, um, Tua coming into the year, you you pointed out a little while ago, you know, people were wondering, okay, is this a guy, you know, we drafted, is this a guy uh, that we saw at Alabama? Um, Right now, three games in, we know he's off to an excellent start, but are you still a Tua buyer for lack of a better term, over the long haul? Or are there still questions about that for Grant Napier? Tom, he's answered a lot of the questions in three weeks. I think his reads are a lot better. It seems to me that he's got a better grasp of the defense that's in front of him. He's not throwing the ball into crowds. Uh, I think he's doing a marvelous job in taking what the defense gives him. And let's face it. When you have Tyreek Hill now and Waddle, and I think going out and getting a left tackle in Armstead, who is great, has really solidified that offensive line. And Tua, who is mobile, who does a pretty nice job of throwing the ball on the run. But in the pocket, he's got tremendous weapons to go to. So he's answered. I was a little apprehensive about Tua based on what I saw in the first two years, Tom. And again, I don't want to make too much out of September. I think we tend to kind of get overboard. If you remember last year, Everybody was going gaga on the Arizona Cardinals when they started off with a great you know, record. I think through 10 games, people were talking about them being the best team. And Kyler Murray was going to be the MVP. And then they fell apart when DeAndre Hopkins got hurt. And they got blown out and looked horrible in the playoffs against the Rams. So we got to put the brakes on just a little bit. But in a small sample size, three games, who's been better than two at the quarterback position? The guy's been brilliant. The guy has been absolutely outstanding. And yes, In a nutshell, he surpassed my expectations already. But again, we're only talking about three games. All right. Grant, we can't thank you enough for your time, man. It's great to hear your voice, uh, you know, for so many years. And we do your radio show together. And obviously, I'd see you doing the play-by-play on TV, doing the Kings games. But, gosh, we had a lot of good times uh, talking all kinds of different sports and so forth. And and I'm thinking about you. Pray for you. I hope you're doing great, man. And wish you nothing but the very, very best. Tom, much respect to you. I always wish the best for you. And anytime you need me, I'm available. I love coming on your show and uh, continued success to you, my friend. Thank you, Grant. All the best. Be well. Grant Napier, kind enough to join us from uh, South Florida. Uh, You know, that guy, I've said a million times, uh, my situation, I don't feel sorry for Tom Brenneman. I said what I said. I made my bed. I'm in it. 
But uh, my my heart really hurts for 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 that guy. And he, and, and look, he doesn't want me feeling sorry for him either. But uh, that guy was just not was he still is. I mean, if you put him back on the air right now, he is a great play by play announcer. He's a great talk show host. Um, I've seen him and heard him and been on with him in, in, in both instances. And uh, I, I really hope that there is somebody out there uh, that will say, you know what? Th- this guy did everything the right way for a long, long, long time. And he should get another chance to do, as he described, uh, what his passion is. And, and I'm rooting for him. I'm really rooting for him.